Travelling by train in Ecuador was already commonplace in the 19th century, and it was the railway that played a decisive role in opening up the country, with its population of just under 10 million today. We'll be seeing a lot more of these poor though happy-go-lucky people and their ability at improvisation in this fascinating and contrastful Latin American country. For the railway is the principal form of transport for the poor. Considering how she lurches from side to side, it's a wonder that the train keeps on the tracks at all. But this is not always the case. Ecuador has its own oil wells. So in the 50s, the diesel began to replace steam. Once upon a time, more than 100 steam locomotives operated throughout Ecuador's 109 square thousand miles. A monument to a romantic steam era and its curious successor. On an autoferro, we head for Quito, capital of Ecuador. The resourceful rail engineers simply remove the wheels from a bus and fix the bus frame on rail wheels, thus creating a rail bus. Conventional rail repair work can be carried out here, as well as curious conversions, such as from bus to train. Crossing a picturesque river, we roll on into Milagro. In situations like this, rail staff have to have a good sense of balance and at times verge on the acrobatic, especially in the streaming rain on oily, slippery plates. Time to move on and a signal to the passengers who've been quenching their thirsts at the nearby bar that they'd better get a move on. Although the flickering in the firebox might look dangerous, it is in fact quite normal. Well, perhaps workshop is slightly exaggerated. I could say, however, that ancient and terminally ill locks are brought here to be coaxed back to life. I think possibly a new bridge is called for here. The lock and first carriage are derailed. First, the crew examines the damage coolly and leisurely. Re-railing equipment, always on board, is brought to the scene, and a particular plant that grows in abundance around here. We rechristened it the re-railing plant. Before we start, the oncoming train, our old friend number 58 from yesterday, has to make the way free. At the time of filming, this lock was the youngest of a handful of steam engines still operating in Ecuador. She's an American Baldwin and was built in the USA in 1953. Derailment number two, after less than 25 miles. As soon as they get word of our plight in Sibamba, they quickly send a rescue team. Downhill is no problem. Spikes needed to stabilize the track are simply removed from another section. After two hours, we can now proceed to Zipamba. But who's worried about time? We are now completely convinced that this train will get us to our destination safe and sound, no matter how long it takes. We were lucky. Yes, we were actually going to be able to ride up and over the devil's nose on board a steam train. <laughs> 